A few nights ago, I posted a video about the conviction of 20-year-old Peter Walker. So, why did he so readily admit to have committed an offense that he neither has the ability or capacity to commit? Who extracted this confession? How and where was it extracted? Did Peter Walke know that this confession could lead to a jail term? Did he understand the implications of being a convict? Did he know the limitations that being an ex-convict would place over his dreams and aspirations? In fact, his entire future, the rejection, the stigmatization, the social distrust that he would have to endure for the rest of his life. Was he so readily willing to accept this punishment? Why was the entire process so rushed? How did it end up in Isu instead of Oweri? Too many questions begging for answers. And you know, as a filmmaker and an actor, before you play a role, you are expected to understand the inner workings of the character, the mindset and belief of the character that you are about to play. In my quest, I found something very interesting. How would you react to people who feel that we don't have rights in Nigeria? No, we do have rights, but the enforcement of those rights is a different issue. Um, people feel they don't have rights because one, there are no strong institutions in Nigeria that can guarantee those rights. Uh, for example, if you go through torture in police detentions and all those things, and uh, you have to go to the courts to prove that, you need a lot of um, uh, pressure, you know, on the system, the institution, to protect that right. And um, if you don't belong to the middle class or the ruling class, it's very difficult to uh, achieve that. So people basically resign to their faith, believing that there is no right. There are rights. There, is, there are laws. The constitution is there. And once they are breached, you can't, you know, enforce their rights. But there again, you find out that there's a lot of money involved in trying to get uh, access to justice and then uh, also to get the uh, justice from the system. Sometimes you say that justice denied, the lady justice denied. And uh, if you can't afford a very strong lawyer who can persuade the courts, you know, for very short adjournments and also uh, compel them to, you know, take their cases, it's become quite difficult to enforce a right. And the, the legal aid process in Nigeria is almost uh, non-existent. So the less privileged really don't get those rights. Mr. William Madi is a lawyer who acknowledges the institutional decay in the legal system and knows exactly how to exploit same effectively. In his own words, the less privileged has no access to rights as contained in the constitution. Peter Walker is poor, a nobody, the kind that the rich look at and say, I will deal with you and nothing will happen. He has no money. He can't afford a good lawyer. He has no powers. He can't put pressure on the system. And with the absence of a legal aid, he can't even get a representation. He can't prove in court what happened to him the two weeks before his sentence. Was he tortured? Too many questions begging for answers. But we cannot allow this horrifying precedence to be set because it would lead to an ugly trend where the rich and powerful will continuously prey on the lives of our vulnerable, our less privileged and our poor. Accuse them and jail them. So it is time for us as a people to stand up and voice out, defend our voiceless, our poor, our aged, our women, and our young people.
We cannot allow the life of a 20-year-old to be smothered on the altar of one man's ambitious and crooked wet dreams. No, we cannot allow anyone to abuse our rights as a people. Nigeria needs builders and not destroyers.